Hello, my name is Dalton Powell. I'm a 12th grader here at Challenger and I'm your student body SGA president. Although this year may not have quite turned out like we expected it to, through SGA we're gonna try to make it as best as we possibly can. So we're gathered tonight for QPM, which is our quarterly parent meeting, which is a required meeting for all students and parents, but it's time for us to get together and celebrate Challenger as a community and celebrate everything going on. On tonight's agenda for QPM, we're going to have our Firebird Chorus members presenting our alma mater and our national anthem. We'll have some updates from CVCC, some information from our principal, some updates from our PSO, some information from student services, updates on athletics and technology, and grade level information pertaining to each individual grade level. And on top of that, we'll finish that up with student reflections. As previously stated, my name is Dalton Powell and I am your SGA president and I just want to take this time to give you a few quick updates on what we're doing this year in our SGA. So each month we're striving to host a Nest Cafe virtually for each student to attend, also to promote student engagement. On top of that, we're also planning another event for each month just to showcase that we're still here for you if you need us. And on top of that, it's going to be events specifically designed for student engagement. At this time, I'm going to hand off to our Firebird Chorus members. We have a few of them tonight presenting our alma mater and our national anthem. the assistant principal at Challenger. Um, thank you for coming tonight. I just have a couple of updates for you. So those of you who are interested in playing um, volleyball or men's soccer this season, I need your paperwork. If you need hard copies of that, just come on into the school. We'll get those to you. Uh, but you can also go to the um, Challenger website under athletics and print those out. Um, and then I need all of that paperwork before October 19th, before October 19th. Um, so practices can start then. You will be hearing from your coaches um, to let you know like all of the details for practice. Uh, since we usually do volleyball and soccer in August and September and October, um, just a heads up, we're doing it November through January now. It's only a two month um, season and that's the same with basketball baseball softball and women's soccer they're all just two months um, about two months 
Um, basketball will start, the practice will start January 5th. Again, I will need all of your paperwork prior to you stepping foot onto the court. Um, and that includes your physical. If you're not sure about your physical, send me an email or call me at school and I will help you out with that. And um, I don't know when practices for baseball, softball, and women's soccer will start yet. Um, that hasn't been decided by the conference, but I will keep you informed. Okay, technology updates. For the Chromebooks, please, 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 please shut them down every night before you go to bed. We go to sleep to let our brain recharge. Chromebooks need to be shut down so that they can recharge. And by that, I mean they need rest, like instead of running constantly. Um, plus, you need to charge them. So you need to shut them down. You need to charge them so that they work better for you. If an issue does occur um, while you're working on it, uh, shut it down and restart it. That fixes 98% of the problems. Um, for those of you who have to do WebEx meetings for your college classes. I know it's a pain in the rear end, um, but what I found that worked for me was watching it on my Chromebook and listening it to it through my phone. So I had to join through two different devices. Um, I, we, Mr. Whalen and I don't care if you use your personal uh, laptop or whatever for um, any of your schoolwork other than high school tests. We would prefer if you use the Chromebook for those. Um, and make sure that you're logging into CCS Engage every day. Um, if, if an issue does persist and shutting it down doesn't work, there's a Google form on the school website to report that, and then um, that comes to me, and I will reach out to you to let you know what we need to do. So if you have any questions about that, again, just shoot me an email, and I will be happy to help you. Hi, I'm Clara Garrison, the junior class president here at Challenger. I think the thing that I miss most about Normal Challenger is just getting to see my friends every day in person. Whether that be in the nest in the mornings during study hall or in classes themselves. In my previous two years here at Challenger, and especially my freshman year, I've made some relationships with people that I wouldn't have known otherwise. And bonds that, if I'm being honest, could last a lifetime. When they say we're a Firebird family, they're not lying. The students and staff here at Challenger are some of the most supportive people I've ever met, and they've helped me get through so much. They're definitely like a family, and I can't wait to see my family in person again. Hi everyone, this is Miss Geyer, um, SGA sponsor. Thank you for your patience as we navigate what to do about our junior-senior field trip. We do have spring dates on the book with the tour company for April 15th, 16th, and 17th to Atlanta at the same price um, as our previous um, fall trip. Um, of course, we'll be playing that by ear as we get closer to time. And um, I will keep you informed um, as things change, if things change. Um, quickly before you go, if you'll look to the um, side of the slide here, you'll see some um, Instagram handles for our SGA, our overall SGA, which is challenger underscore SGA, and then our class SGAs for the um, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. You'll see those there. Um, please go ahead and join those parents and students. Um, they're a really great way to keep up to date with um, SGA events that are coming up, um, games that they'll play on the Instagram and um, challenges, and also just keeping our community intact and um, vibrant as we navigate through this quarantine time. Hey everyone, this is Miss Reynolds. Um, just an update from the student services side. Miss Kale, Miss Mosgala, Miss Sigmund, and I have all placed our emails into this slide. Additionally, um, we have placed our Google Calendar appointment slide, um, appointment link rather, and so all you have to do is just go in there, click on it, and you can see our appointment page and schedule as needed. Um, just a couple of reminders, students should be at home working on schoolwork between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m., just as you would as if you were here on campus. Um, you shouldn't really be doing much work after 4.30 p.m. unless you have, you know, additional homework to do. Also, hotspots do have data limits, so please only use them for schoolwork.
And as always, if you guys need anything, please reach out to us. Um, this will be shared so you can access the links on this page. Um, and a resources page will also be coming with additional resources from outside of the school. Good evening, this is Tiffany Hightower, the PSO President of Challenger. Unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot to update from the PSO. Um, you see our officers that you've been introduced to before. And I just had a couple of things that I wanted to mention. Um, we are still collecting PSO dues. Um, a great way to send those in is through our K-12 Payment Center. Um, you can That's just $35 plus a little fee, and you can do that online. Um, or if you want to bring $40 to the school office, then we can collect those there. Um, we've had a good amount collected, but we still have about a third of our families that still owe their dues. We have been overwhelmed by the generosity of our Challenger families in um, giving to the hospitality. And our teachers just really feel loved. They are amazed and thankful for um, the way that our families and students you know, care about them. We would love to be starting some plans for fundraising. Um, one of the things that is always enjoyable is the International Festival. Not only is it a way to raise money for Challenger, but it's also a fun event to attend. Um, we have great international food that is prepared by our families and demonstrations by Challenger students. The last thing I wanted to just mention is the new is another fundraising opportunity called Shop with Scrip and be looking for a email that has a lot more information on it. So this is a way to raise money for Challenger using gift cards. You're spending just like you normally would, but a portion of the amount goes toward Challenger and a portion goes toward your family. It's collected over the course of the year and I'll be sending out a we'll, we'll be sending out a email later, so be looking for a more thorough explanation of this great fundraiser, Shop with Scrip. The example you have on the screen there of the app is called Raise Right, and that's something also that I'll be explaining that is an easy way to shop on the go, to use it with um, a pretty seamless experience. Hey guys, my name is Angelina and I'm a sophomore here at Challenger and I'm here to talk about the community we have built among the students and the staff here at our school. During these trying times, it is more important than ever to have a strong support system and the community we have built at CHS has been very beneficial in student success at online learning thus far. Among the students, we feel comfortable reaching out to one another when we need anything, whether this is help on an assignment or the code to get into an online meeting. Many of us have also joined study groups where we can get help from our peers taking the same courses as us on materials we may be struggling with or we can study for upcoming exams and tests. A lot of us have also gotten motivational partners so that we have someone to talk to when things get stressful and also have someone reminding us how important it is to try our best every single day. The teachers have also been so helpful during these unusual times. They have set up office hours so that we have the ability to get one-on-one -on -one help with assignments we may be struggling with. They have also been so understanding and flexible to the fact that many students are experiencing personal issues due to COVID-19. I know that the community we have here at Challenger is more important than ever, and I know that all of the students are so thankful for the overwhelming support they feel from their peers and their teachers every single day. Hello everyone, this is Debbie Austin with some CVCC updates. CVCC is committed to keeping faculty, staff, and students safe while on campus. It is important for students to know that there will be no withdrawal emergency grading um, as happened at the end of um, spring semester because of COVID. The college has decided that this time, at the end of this semester, students will receive the grade they earn in the class. Hopefully, when spring classes start on February 1st, we will be able to come back on campus. I'm doing a series of financial aid presentations for the seniors. 
I will be recording these sessions so that parents and students can listen to them um, at different times. The next one will be on Wednesday, October the 14th at 630 when I talk about student and parent loans. Then I will finish up the session on financial aid on Wednesday, October 22nd as I talk about the verification process, how to do a professional judgment request. We will talk about um, the money that we need to send into our schools for enrollment deposit, for housing applications, and all those um, parts and pieces that go into the financial aid world. And just as a reminder to seniors, never pay for someone to complete your FAFSA for you. There is plenty of help on campus for you should you have any questions. On Tuesday, October 27th from 2 to 3, the Challenger seniors will have a meeting dedicated just to them with the representatives from Western Carolina University. I will be sending you the link to the event. Um, you do not have to apply or have any interest to Western Carolina to attend. Uh, I also want to remind you to let me know when you're recognized uh, as being accepted to a university. I want to be sure that we note that and celebrate with you. Now some things about spring semester for all of the groups. All freshmen will take Health 110. This will happen sometime between the 9 and 11 hour, either on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Sophomores who pass their two required UGETSI classes will take English 111. Parents, ask your students what those classes are and they should be able to tell you. Also in the spring, I will be doing the applications for the Associate in Science degree and the Associate in General Education Nursing that will be available to sophomores. Both of these degrees must be um, applied for and we will look at things such as grades and work ethic and general career plans. In the spring, the juniors will continue with their English, their history, and their elective classes and seniors will apply to graduate in January from CVCC. That's always a special time for me as I celebrate the end of the four-year journey uh, with those seniors. Also just to note, for the freshmen and sophomores and maybe some of the juniors, we do have new degrees that are coming um, into the picture uh, starting in the fall and that's the Associate in Arts and Associate in Science and Teacher Preparation. So those two degrees are for those who plan careers in education or to study um, to be a teacher at a university. Hi everyone, my name is Shelley Song and I'm a junior at Challenger. As a student, I don't have many opportunities or guts to tell my teachers and staff Thank you. Right now, everyone is so prone to stress, but yet as a Challenger community, you guys have chose to do more than teach, counsel, plan, and organize. You guys chose to care for us. I don't think I would ever be like who I am today if it weren't for Challenger staff reaching out to us and making sure that we are meeting expectations and are disciplining us. I don't know how you guys are handling this, but you guys are so professional. Doing your job, taking care of your family, interacting with students, and handling stress must be so difficult. But we see you and we appreciate you. As small of a group you guys may be, the biggest hearts you guys have. Again, we see the little things and we appreciate you. It means a lot to us. Good evening, Firebird families. This is Mr. Whalen with the principal update portion of QPM. So the 2020-21 school year has definitely not been what we expected it to be. For freshmen, we know for sure with you guys, this is not what you expect a challenger to look like. And trust us, it's not what challenger normally looks like. Normally classes are very loud in a good way. Uh, students are collaborating, working with each other, and there's a lot of excitement within the, the hallways. And this year has definitely been a lot quieter and uh, I would say, dare say a little creepier. Um, just so you guys know, all the stuff that we had planned at the beginning with the team building act activities and the zipline course and that sort of thing, we still plan on doing a lot of that. So hopefully in the spring, it'll get a little better with COVID and we'll have the opportunities to do a little bit more stuff. We're also working on planning some activities with you guys specifically to get you to know other people that you don't see throughout the day. 
And with seniors, we definitely want to make senior year memorable for you guys. We're going to meet with seniors to try to plan some activities as well. We want this, even though it's a COVID year, we want this to be a really good year and special year for you seniors. So be on the lookout for that. Speaking of dealing with COVID, CVCC has done a great job with dealing with COVID. They've kept the class sizes to 25% or less. They are doing a great job screening our students for us. And anybody that walks in the building has to be screened, uh, temperature check, and answer the questions. And they're also doing a great job of cleaning. So every night they sanitize the classrooms and make sure that everything has been sprayed down. Our teachers are also, if you don't know, our teachers are also cleaning the classrooms in between all the classes. So every desk, every chair is sprayed down uh, each, uh, in between each class. We are maintaining social distance, so basically over six foot or, or maybe even farther apart within classes. We are trying to give students a chance to go outside and have a face mask break as much as possible. And we're encouraging our teachers to take the students outside and we're trying to even give them some time if they want to go outside for lunch just to spread themselves out and enjoy the weather outside as long as it's comfortable. Communication is definitely the most important part of this semester and this school year. So we obviously want students, we want you to communicate with your teachers, your professors, if you have any concerns, any struggles at all, or communicate with me or Ms. DeArmond or Ms. Austin. Please reach out to us if there's anything we can do for you or anything you need. Don't wait till it's too late and don't get too far behind. Parents, same goes for you. Please reach out to us, anything you need. And we expect our teachers and us and the administrators to reach out to you guys as well. So we want to keep the communication lines open both ways. Master-based grading is an important part of Challenger. It's been tweaked a little bit this summer, and I'm sure you've noticed a little bit of a change. But the main point I want to bring up with this is that students, you really should be working towards mastering those standards or those goals your teachers have set for you within those classes. And you will have opportunities, obviously, to retest on those goals and improve your grade. But keep in mind, we want you to do your best every single time, and your, your goal should always be uh, to master each standard. We are finally getting around to starting clubs. Those will be starting October 16th. The students received information about that last Friday and should have had an opportunity to sign up for clubs. If they've not signed up for clubs, the deadline is tomorrow, so please make sure you fill out that survey and sign up for clubs if you would like to be part of a club this semester. The SGA is also coordinating school activities. They have four activities, I, I believe, going on in October, and they will also each month have special activities planned to engage students outside of just academics. And like I said before, we are here for you. Please, please, please reach out to us if there's anything we can do for you at all. Do not hesitate to call the school and ask. As you saw from the email, there was a change in the calendar, uh, the challenger calendar, based on CVCC's change. So CVCC has changed where they, their start date is now February 1st. So the college classes will not start until February 1st. And they will last through the second week in May. This forced us to move our previously three days off in February, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. We had to move those to January 6th, 7th, and 8th. So you should have the updated calendar. Uh, the good news is now you'll have about three weeks off for, for Christmas break. The bad news is we won't have a long spring break like we normally do. Um, but just want to give you guys another reminder about this schedule change. From your PAA, you should have already gotten progress report grades. If not, please reach out to them. The teachers are also going to reach out to you if they need to schedule a conference with your son or daughter. If you still have money, whether it be money for student fees, for, for Challenger, for CVC, CVCC, or if it's PSO dues, uh, please make sure you make those payments. Your PA, PAA should reach out to you if you still have money. And remember, we would love to, for you to make your payments on k12paymentcenter.com. It's much more convenient for us. If you have any questions about that, call Ms. Shuford in the main office. And then hours owed. Right now, we've only let the seniors know what hours they still have owed. So if you have a senior PA, they should be reaching out to you. The hour service hours that are normally required, the two hours in the fall, have been waived. So now we only have two hours for the spring. So we'll kind of keep you posted with those hours as we go through the year. And then, most importantly, the teachers will host a question and answer period after this video tonight. So if you do have any questions at all, please reach out to them. If they don't know the answer, they will... Sure, surely reach out to me or Miss Austin and we can hopefully find the answer for you. 
Last two things I've got for you. Please, if you've not followed us already on social media, please do so if you have Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. We try to post all information on those places as well as pictures of our students and when they're doing activities just to celebrate our staff and our students in general. And if you've not signed up for Remind, I shared this with you at Open House. If you would, please, if you're a ninth grade parent, if you would text at 202024CECHS to 81010, and then each of the other grade levels, it's pretty much the same thing. If you guys would, please do that now. I would love to have both parents, if you have both parents, to sign up for Remind as well as a student. That way I can send out a quick text message uh, to you from my phone. Thank you again for coming, and I will pass it along to your teachers now. Thank you so much. Hello, ninth grade parents and students. This is Mr. Nixon, your English teacher, to talk to you about some important ninth grade information. First of all, uh, the ninth grade teachers would like to thank you for a few things you're doing really well. Ninth graders, you're doing a great job with professional emails. So good work, Mrs. Stone, training them on that, and good work, students, for sending the emails the way that you are. Make sure you keep that up. Many of you are also asking lots of questions when you need help, and that's always a great sign. So make sure that you continue to ask lots of questions. The other thing is we're noticing that you are talking and participating in class, and you're getting to know each other, and that's really great. Some other things that you need to know. Make sure that you are reading announcements and assignment guidelines completely to make sure you understand. Often we're having to return work or give lower grades than we want to because you just didn't read the assignment guidelines. So make sure you understand exactly what's being asked of you before you submit. It's also important for written work that you proofread it before submitting. Um, we see lots of uh, small errors in grammar and punctuation and capitalization and spelling. So use the grammar and spell check tools that are available in the Google Documents. And then if you need to, read it out loud. Often that will help you catch errors. Then, of course, as we've said before, uh, remember to send emails and chats to communicate with your teachers rather than leaving comments on Classroom. Like you, we get so many notifications from Google Classroom that we miss things. So email is your best bet, and chats are also useful. Be sure to check your email addresses, both your high school and college email addresses, three times a day. So when you get up in the morning, around lunch, before you stop working for the day, just to make sure you aren't missing anything. And as you know, if you've been in my English class, it's important to keep your email organized. Get rid of messages that you don't need, archive messages that you don't re need right now, and save your inbox for recent messages, especially messages that um, are something that you have to do or respond to. That helps you stay on top of your work. Also, make sure that you're logging into Google Classroom multiple times a day to check on your assignments or if there's anything new that your teacher has posted. Log into Blackboard every day to keep up with your PE class. And then communicate with your teachers through email or chat if you're unable to meet deadlines, if you um, feel that you can't meet the expectations for an assignment, or if you have questions about how to get the work done. Um, with the situation we're in, it's really hard for us to know when you need help if you don't tell us because we're not with you every day. It's also important to remember that on online days, which you have many of, the at-home work is your school day. We're not just sending you homework. We're actually sending you work that we're expecting you to complete that day. So, and this is important for parents too, remember um, that students need an environment where they can connect to the internet and get work done during the day. Make sure to attend your B Week online sessions. I'm going to show you the schedule right now. So if you need to, pause the video and take a look uh, at your B Week schedule. It's important to attend your B Week online sessions. It's just as important as attending your in-person sessions on weeks that you're here. If for some reason you're unable to meet a particular session, then let your teacher know and we'll get another session for you to log into. Make sure you're there and also make sure you're participating and not just attending but not paying attention. Use a planner. Make sure that you have a way to keep up with the work that you need to do. Use something that works for you that's not too complicated that lets you know um, what assignments you have upcoming in class and also when you plan to work on assignments outside of meetings. 
Then finally, make friends with the other ninth graders. You're all in this together, and the more that you can get to know each other and build a team, the less of a burden the work will seem. Thank you very much, and let us know if you ever need help. Hello and welcome to a day in the life of a Challenger student at home. So I do all of my work from home because I am a remote only student and this is basically a video showing you how to do schoolwork at home. Just a disclaimer, this video is silly and for entertainment purposes, but actually take your schoolwork seriously and try to get the best grades that you possibly can. So yeah, and without further ado, this is what to do when you're working from home. Students should get up around 8 a.m. so that they can get up, get dressed, brush their teeth, get breakfast, and get ready before they start working for the day. Try doing your work outside of your room. A table or desk in a different room would be perfect. It might be difficult, but make sure you put your phone away from your work area. Try to keep an agenda. What I like to do is go into the notes app and take a list of assignments that I need to get done for the day. I also have a schedule inside of all of my notebooks so I don't forget and miss my classes. And make sure you're working from 9 to 4.30 every single day, just like you would at a regular day of school. Try to add your meeting times into Google Calendar. You don't want to be late for your meetings because you don't want to miss any information that they're going on. Instead, add these events to your Google Calendar and put on an alarm to alert you before your meeting begins. Although you're at home, please try not to lounge around and do your schoolwork. Actually put in effort and do the best that you possibly can. When it's lunchtime, it's great to take a break and relax your mind for a little bit. If the weather's nice, try eating outside. If the weather isn't looking too good, try eating inside with your family members. What if your employer calls you and tells you you need to come in for work at 2.30? Well, you can't, because during a regular day of school, you wouldn't even be able to go into work at 2.30. You have to treat online school like you would regular school. You can't do any work until after 4.30. If you have any questions for your teachers or professors, you should definitely email them before 4.30. And try to use proper grammar and good spelling whenever writing these emails. Try to go to bed at a decent time and get a good amount of sleep every night. Online school is a learning experience for all of us, but I know you all are going to do great this year. So put in the most effort that you possibly can and try to get the best grades that you can. Hi everyone, Miss Geyer again with some updates and some reminders for 10th graders, parents, and students. Um, as we go through the rest of the semester, please remember that our two main goals are communication and self-advocacy. We understand that things don't always go to plan, and in those cases, email, Google Chat are great ways to let your teachers know what's going on and to advocate for yourself for extensions on assignments as well as um, help any help that you might need. Um, a celebration is that we feel like you are doing very well to reach out and advocate for yourself with your teachers um, in your um, assignments. Um, we prefer, please, that you make sure you're working when teachers are working. Um, that just ensures that when you do reach out and ask for help and when you do reach out and ask for extensions that we're able to see it in a timely manner and we're able to respond while we're working. Um, and don't forget the resource of your peers. Um, of course, your teachers are always available to you, but in the in the evenings and late at night when some of you are working, um, your peers are great resources. Please don't forget to reach out to the people in your class um, to ask those questions and get clarification on things um, if you can't reach your teacher right away. Um, a couple of reminders, there is a filing cabinet at the end of the hallway, at the end of the east wing hallway, right as you come in um, where you would get dropped off by the bus or a car. Um, and in that filing cabinet is hard copies of your math toolkit, hard copies of chemistry papers, and sometimes um, books or hard copies of things from English. If you ever need a hard copy and um, you're wondering where to pick that up, it's always going to be in that filing cabinet at the end of the hallway. Um, another reminder is that your online work replaces your class time. So don't feel like that the work that we assign um, while you're not in school is homework or that it is necessarily um, a formative or summative grade. We encourage you to work with your friends unless your teacher has asked you not to. Get on uh, FaceTime or um, get on with your teacher and ask questions and work on that as with other people just like you would in class. Use your office hours of your teachers or reach out for a meeting if their office hours are at a time when you can't make it. Um, we are so available to you. We would love to join a Google Meet and go over some work with you. And then please also schedule your days like class time. So schedule 
for yourself to work on English from 11 to 12 or schedule yourself to work from chemi on chemistry from 1 to 2. Be mindful of when your teacher's office hours are and maybe try and work in those office hours so that if you have questions, it's very easy for you to pop in and ask questions. This is Ms. Sigmund, the Student Services Counselor. Every single sophomore will be taking the pre-ACT on Thursday, October 22nd from 8.30 to 12.30. It's very important that students arrive by 8.30 at school that day. Every single sophomore will be taking it in person, whether they are, are an all-online student or they are an in-person student. Mr. Kale will be giving a lot more information in connections. If you have further questions, please feel free to email or call me. Thank you. This concludes tonight's meeting. Thank you to everyone who attended. And students, if you have any ideas for SGA, please send them that way, send them my way in an email.